Now, just as a reminder, as you are putting together your final versions of your tasks, remember, use the vocabulary of your target user. When you are running your participants, you also want to do this. Try to use basic vocabulary that your target user would use. It takes a little training for us to do this. But try to speak in a very informal manner with them. Don't use terminology that's specific to your software or that would identify specific elements. This includes when you're doing prompts. Right? Remember, keep them neutral. Don't identify something on the computer. There are a lot of times for participants who are having difficulty completing something, they'll ask you how to do it. Right? Don't give them hints. Don't talk about what's on the screen or in their hand. Right? Neutral. Remember, don't lead the user. We talked about that already. Keep your questions simple and direct and very open-ended. Again, tasks should reflect realistic scenarios. Carefully review your questions on your documents. And whenever it's reasonable, you're going to use a Likert or Likert scale. I always call it a Likert scale. People tell me it's a Likert scale, and then someone else tells me it's a Likert scale. So whichever, one you, whichever way you like saying it. Now, have any of you heard of a Likert or Likert scale? Other than I meant when I mentioned it in this class. I know, I bet all of you have seen it before. You probably just don't know what the name is. So what is a Likert scale? Something like this. Oh, yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. All right, you've all seen something like this before, right? Right, you basically have a number of what are called forced choice answers. These are the answers that you, that you have. You know, you have your questions, you have all of your various options. Your user just answers one of them. It's basically on a scale of 1 to 5, on a scale of 1 to 10, those types of things. You want to make sure that when you are using your scales, first, use them whenever you can. So if you are asking about something like how much they like the product, perfect question for a Likert scale. When you are doing this, for all of your questions, try to make sure they all have the same number of responses. If you're going to use a five-point scale, consistently use a five-point scale. Don't go from a five-point to a seven-point to a three-point. That's going to confuse your users. You're going to assign numeric values to each response, but that is for when you are analyzing your data. You're going to be creating something like this that's going to have actual terms that describe what each of those levels mean. We'll get into a little, few more details about that in a minute. But when you are entering your data, you're going to be assigning a number to each of those. Now, I've had, had uh, groups ask me, well, can I include the number with the, with the verbiage? Yes, you can, but you must have the description. Here's another thing, particularly when you are doing user experience testing. Make sure you arrange all your responses in the same order, preferably from negative to positive, because that's what we tend to expect. This is not always the case when you are doing things such as psychological studies, where they mix it up a little bit. You want to keep it consistent, because this is what I want you to think about. When you have done, say, a survey like this, for every question that you ask, do you go back up and read the various options every single time? No, you expect them to be the same. So that's what your users are going to expect. I also want you to look at the questions. They're very explicit, concise, and to the point. Course objectives and goals were presented and understood. Strongly agree, agree. Neutral, I want you to notice that one a minute. Disagree, strongly disagree, and not applicable. Why do you want to include not applicable? If they didn't complete the task, it may not be relevant. Or there may be some other reason that it's not relevant. If that's not there and it's not relevant, either A, they're going to skip the question, or B, they're just going to fill anything out. 
which will corrupt your data. Now here's another example. You've probably seen scales similar to this. And this actually is a bad example. This is what you do not want to do. This is a good example. This is what you want to do. Bad example. Now before I tell you what's wrong with it, by the way, this makes an awesome exam question. What do you think is wrong with this? <coughs> what are some problems you see with it? If you were trying to fill this out. Okay, I heard lots of voices and couldn't understand any of you. Right, so it's very cluttered, cluttered, things are together. Here we have strongly disagree and strongly agree. Are you supposed to include strongly disagree or does it start at one? I heard both answers. It actually could be either way, who knows? Yeah, some people would circle the number. Some people would circle the word. What else? All right, so you have to actually, yeah, so you have to actually read everything to differentiate the questions from here. These are very close together, right? What else? Too much repetition. Too much repetition? In terms of the scale, strongly disagree, strongly disagree, strongly disagree, strongly disagree. What else? Too many numbers. Too many numbers. Some of you think it's too many numbers. Sometimes it can be. There are seven point scales, assuming this is a seven point scales, are, are, are actually common, but, it, but in some cases it's going to be more than you really need. Most of the time people use five point scales. You don't know which number means what. You don't know what these various numbers mean. What do they mean? Right? Particularly if we look at something in the middle. Let's look at number four. What does number four mean? It could be neutral. It could be you don't care. It could be you're the fourth user. All right? It could be, well, you know, yeah, I kind of, you know, I kind of like it. So it's too amorphous. We're not sure what each of these actually mean, which is why you want to use something like this where it is explicit. Here's one other thing. The questions actually are a bit sub, uh, 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 subjective. I will tell you it's not always easy to write neutral questions. Um, you do want to try to limit the bias as much as possible, but they are a little sub, uh, so these are a little bit subjective because they are le definitely leaning towards the positive. So instead of is it simple, you know, it is simple to use, what would be a better way? Even just word take changing the word a little bit. How about how simple or difficult did you find this to use? Not perfect, but better. Now, here's one other thing. There are a bunch of dots in here. Do you think someone may go and circle a dot instead of a number? Yeah. Yep, they will. And then if you have your analyses all planned out and they're planned out on a seven point scale, now you're looking at this and you're like, oh crap. Now what do I do? Completely different analyses. So that's the other problem with these. So remember, good example. Not so good. Makes an awesome exam question where I can give you an example and say, is this a good example or not? Tell me why. And if it's a bad example, fix it. I love that question. It's very easy to grade for me, too. I immediately see if someone gets it. All right, so here, I'm not going to go through these. Here are just some other examples of Likert, you know, Likert scales that you can use. Here's a seven point. One of the things I'd like to point out about this one is it's very specific. Frequently is about 70% of the time. Very specific. 
because people can have different ideas about what does rarely mean, what does occasionally mean, what does sometimes mean. Try to be specific. So you can take a look at these, use them. There are many others out there that you can use. These are probably some of the more commonly used ones. I don't know how well you can see this. This again is just a, an, an example where you can see here are all the questions and you just have a nice table with the titles on the top. Make sense? Yes? You guys are ready for an exam question on uh, Likert scales? Uh, yeah. Some of you are like, yeah, you're, those are like, yeah, no, don't put that on the exam. 